Well, that was absolutely incredible. I've never seen that. I'm fascinated by it. I'm terrified by it, and I'm going to have to try it. Um, hi, my name is Edward Thompson. Uh, I'm a program manager at Microsoft, and today I want to show you how to break your Git repository, or more importantly, maybe how to keep from breaking your Git repository, because it's actually, I don't know about you, but my Git repository is actually really important. I keep a lot of stuff there, a lot of code, well, a lot of code, uh, and I don't want to break it. So uh, I think it's very important to uh, look at how not to. Um, I do a lot of talks talking about best practices. I want to talk about some worst practices. But before I do, I do want to talk about one best practice, and that is line endings. Um, and I can't not talk about this because it is oh so important. Um, let's take a look real quick at a repository that has a poor line ending configuration. So I'm going to clone a repository. I'm going to pop into it and I'm going to run git status, right? I cloned it, status is clean, exactly what I expect. Uh, now I'm going to do, let's see, I've just got one file, one file, nice and easy. What I want to do is look at my cache. Now, a lot of people have bad line ending configurations in their repository and don't know it, and that's because git has this nice little cache of what's in the working directory. And it tries to really save you when you have a bad configuration. Let's blow it away and see what happens. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to run git add, which will recreate the cache. Still clean. Now, let's change my git config and turn auto CRLF to false. Do the same thing, delete that cache and recreate it. And now when I run git status, oh my god, my file's modified. But I didn't touch the file. And if I run git diff, oh, it tells me nothing's modified. I think a lot of people have seen this, especially on Windows. This is a bad uh, place to be, and it's because I am out of sync with my auto CRLF settings. Here's the thing, don't trust core auto CRLF. Why? Everybody has a different setup. I can set core auto CRLF on my machine, you can set auto CRLF on yours, and unless they match, we're going to get into this problem where I'm changing things and not seeing, or rather, where I'm not changing anything and I'm seeing changes. So, solution, always, always, always use a .git attributes file. It defines how the repository looks. When everybody clones that repository, they'll get the same line in configuration. You won't get into this mess. Okay, so that's what to do. Now, some things not to do. Don't go monkeying around with your core settings in your git config. For example, core.ignore case. It's not there for you to change. What it is, is actually a cached data about your file system. So when you run git init, when you run git clone, git looks at what kind of file system you have, decides whether you have a case sensitive file system or not, and sets this option. Don't go changing it, because when you do, Let's just do a case changing rename, right? This is the same file name on Mac OS because it's a case insensitive file system. If I run git status, nothing has changed. If I run git config core dot ignore case, it'll tell me that ignore case is set to true because I have a case insensitive file system. Now, let me turn that off. Let me break this. Now when I run git status, oh, it, it thinks that hello.txt has changed. And in fact, if I change it, run git add, and run git status, oh, now I'm in a weird place. Let me scroll up so you can see. Now I've got a new file called hello.txt in all caps, and I've modified hello.txt in all lowercase, but I've actually only got one file in my working directory. Oh. And if I commit things, it gets worse. And if I think I've screwed everything up, and I want to get out of it in the traditional Git way, which is clone the repository all over again, right? How many people solve their Git problems that way? Oh, 
even that doesn't work. So bad situation to be in. Don't change core.ignore case. Hey, what else shouldn't you change? Core.precompose Unicode. What on earth does that do? Well, just like ignore case, your, uh, when Git creates a repository, it detects whether you are on a Macintosh. Why is that important? Well, real quick introduction to Unicode normal forms. That glyph, E with two dots over it, Latin small letter E with diureses, can be represented by one Unicode character, EB, or two Unicode characters, a normal small E without any dots over it, right? An American E, if you will. We don't, we don't do things with uh, excitement in America. Uh, and the combining character for a diuresis. So it's basically, you know, what Unicode is saying is, hey, put an E and then put two dots over it, okay? So those are two ways to do it. That's pre-composed Unicode, decomposed Unicode, right? I'm sorry if you didn't know this and now you do, you'll never forget it and it will be terrible for the rest of your life. But how does this affect Git? Well, in predictably terrible ways. Um, so here I've got a uh, hello, a file, hello with, I don't know, it's a very metal hello. Again, being American, we don't understand these things. The only time we've ever seen it is in metal bands from, well, your country. Uh, so we call those like metal umlauts. Um, and so that's, that's very nice. But let's again look at the index, and it will actually show me the actual characters being used here. Uh, and that is uh, the way that, that is basically canonically composed Unicode. And that's great. However, if I turn this option off that Git has turned on for me, and then run Git status, whoop, now all of a sudden everything's changed because Mac OS on disk will always store canonically decomposed, always. Doesn't matter what kind of, what you type, whether it's a single character E with dots over it or two characters E plus combining character diuresis, you will always get this format. Git knows enough to recompose everything because that's what everybody actually uses in the real world. Um, so by turning that off, by toggling this flag, you are confusing Git as to the name of your file. Turn it back on, no changes. Turn it back off, actually turn it off, changes again. So, just like ignore case, precompose Unicode tells you, or tells Git, the, the promises that you are making with your file system. So, unless you want pain, don't go changing that. But there are more core settings. Protect NTFS, protect HFS. What on earth is going on here? Well, Here I can clone this repository. I've got a repository called protect NTFS. And if I go into protect NTFS, I've got one file called hello.txt. But the thing is, I've got another branch. There it is. Uh, it's called sneaky. And I'm not going to be able to check sneaky out because I've got core.protectNTFS set since I'm on an NTFS file system. But let me turn that off. Right? If I query it, it's actually on by default. I can explicitly turn it off, which I should certainly never do. And then I can check out that sneaky branch. Real quick, who's looked inside their .git folder before? Raise your hand. Love it. So you're used to seeing this. And this is basically what it looks like. It's got a bunch of metadata. That's the configuration. That's how your Git repository is defined on disk. Um, so let me uh, do one thing. One, you know, this is right there in .git. You can't add files to that, right? You can't put these files in your repository. If I run git add on one of these files, like the index, git will tell me that it won't do it, right? That's its area. I can't touch it. I can't check files in that will end up getting written to that repository, right? Well, let's take another look at that. Oh, hey, wow, that file's new. Hello from inside your repository. It's like a horror movie. The telephone call is coming from inside your repository. And that's because I've turned off core.protectNTFS. What that does is it prevents you from writing files like this one here, git tilde one, 
what on earth is Git tilde one? Well, if you remember way, way back in the day, and I'm sure not all of you are old enough to remember this, in DOS, you had 8.3 file names. And then when we got long file names eventually in Windows, um, we had some backward compatibility hacks that had a tilde one at the end. And so what this does, if you open git tilde one, that will actually map to your .git folder behind the scenes. So Windows does all this magic translation for you. So if you happen to have a file in your repository called git tilde one slash hello from inside your Git repository, it will go into your Git repository on Windows, unless you have Core Protect NTFS on. That will prevent this from happening. Why is this important? Well, people can overwrite stuff in your Git repository, and that would be terrible if, if you allowed that. So Git tries to protect you from this rather obscure but important security vulnerability. As long as that is on, don't ever, pretty please, turn it off. Right. One last thing. Please do not put operating system reserved file names in your Git repository. Um, you would think that this doesn't need to be said unless you've tried cloning the Linux kernel on Windows, which doesn't work at all. What on earth happens? Well, let me move that up so you can see in the back. If I try to clone this repository, woof. Um, I don't know, it just gave me a bunch of weird error messages. And if I actually go into the directory and run dir, oh, well, my file's there, but if I run git status, oh, everything's terrible. Um, I've got this file that's untracked, but it's also deleted, and this is actually the crux of the issue, AUX. AUX is a reserved name on Windows, kind of like LPT1 or COM1. Um, and so you simply can't create a file named AUX. If you try, you get a failure, right? So uh, by putting a file, uh, uh, a file in my repository named AUX, I've basically broken anybody's ability to use it on Windows. And that's true even if it was AUX.C. That's also a reserved name, and it turns out the name of a file in the Linux kernel, thus ensuring that no Windows user will ever be able to clone it. So, please don't do these things. Um, if you didn't learn your lesson and you uh, once again forgot to take a picture, quick recap, always set up a Git attributes, always, always, always in your Git repository that defines your line in and configuration. Don't go monkeying with the core dot star configuration options and pretty please don't check in operating system reserved file names. This was super lightning. Um, but if you want more information on any of these fascinating things and why Git works the way it does, be sure to check out insidegit.com, a couple of talks about the Git internals. All right, thanks so much.